I, <laughs> I hope everyone is doing well today and is enjoying the conference. Um, I am uh, very ha happy this morning to be able to introduce to you Maya Georgieva, who is a real powerhouse in the field of XR and higher education with a global reputation as a leader in the future of learning. As the Director of Education Futures and the X Reality Center at the New School, she works to engage the community and provide strategic leadership in, in creating an institutional culture and capacity for innovative design with emerging technologies, including XR and AI. This is an important role in advancing research and implementation of XR technologies by reaching across the often siloed offices and functions in academic institutions, as well as out into the community and corporate sector. She's deeply involved with the Immersive Learning Research Network and is one of the lead authors of the State of XR and Immersive Learning Report, which was launched here uh, yesterday, as well as being co-author of the Enterprise ELI series on VR and AR. She's authored white papers and research studies on the future of uh, higher education uh, and immersive learning um, in the Educause Review, the Chronicle of Higher Education, EdTech Magazine, EdSurge, Edutopia, and other publications. Uh, Mine's the co-founder of uh, Digital Bodies, an award-winning website focusing on um, on uh, VR, AR, MR, and their impact on media and society. And if you haven't checked it out, I suggest you do so. Um, she has worked with, uh, <laughs> she has worked with, um, uh, I, I somehow ended up from where I didn't think I was going to be here. <laughs> so um, she's, she's worked with companies like Google, uh, HP, Microsoft, Intel, Salesforce, um, other nonprofits, um, and she's spoken at United Nations forums and assisted the European Commission on policy recommendations for the future of learning and work. In addition, she's innovator in residence at Arizona State University's Shaping EDU, where she leads the Immersive Learning Project. She is a member of the uh, Educause Horizon Report expert panel. Uh, for higher education and the recipient of the Campus Technologies Education Futurist Award for her work at New York University. I'm really excited to hear the presentation Maya has prepared for us today, Our Future with XR and AI, Story Living and Creativity in the Age of Experience. Please join me in uh, hitting F4 to welcome Maya Georgieva. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. And um, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for this um, really kind introduction. And I just felt like, um, you know, my 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 sort of life in the last decade flashed in front of my eyes. Uh, <laughs> but it's been truly an extraordinary experience to get engaged very early on with immersive learning and XR. And to be here today on the stage on the virtual Iowa and campus day four uh, and speak to all of you and I hope that uh, you all uh, have a chance to continue to explore this canvas and this campus and um, you know get a chance to not only go into the formal areas in the innovation studios and future salons and here on the main stage but also go to the beach and the space bar and I hang out there so I'm now giving it all out so if you want to meet you know, check this place, check these places. Um, I love that we are doing and trying to connect in, uh, in over different platforms and places this year. Um, and so I'm going to start by simply saying, you know, where, where I come from. Um, you know, presently my home is um, the New School. I lead the X Reality Center at the New School. And um, we at the center focus on telling stories with immersive, augmented, and virtual uh, reality. Uh, and that brings me to the essence of why I'm here and why I'm involved so much in, in, in this environment. Uh, because in this world, in this work, is because um, stories, how we, how we arrive here is that stories help us make sense of the world and have been around since the dawn of humanity. But we are at the beginning of something new 
something that will change the way we tell and create stories forever. We have long we have journey long through journey immersive, immersive mediums, mediums, from cave from paintings, big theater, Renaissance art, early movies to TV, and now we will jump through the screen and eliminate the frame. In the present moment, we move from media in prison within the screen to stepping into virtual worlds. In the future, we will have stories that have no beginning and no end. We live in virtual narratives taking place on immersive platforms. From storytelling, story living, it provides us what makes immersive worlds a distinct storytelling medium, what makes virtual worlds compelling experiences. And I'd like to share a few thoughts around that. How this happened, what makes them distinct. First, it conveys the sense that the viewer is leading the story as opposed to being told the story rather than story telling, it's story living. We are no longer viewing, but rather experience these narratives. It allows us to expand our perspective and something also describes a shapeshift. And third, it leaves us with powerful emotional experiences. Virtual worlds are fascinating and provide us with the opportunity to participate in the story, seek out specific emotional states, and sometimes embody somebody else. Immersive characters like Lucy from Fable Studios, Wolf in, Wolves in the Wall, don't just live in the virtual world. They acknowledge you. Lucy draws your hands, so you actively participate with her in the experience. In some sense, you become a character in her story. Immersive narratives will be integrated in our everyday lives and digital characters will interact with us. There will be instances of our lives will be changed through immersive stories and other instances of people deceived by interacting with the virtual beings in these stories. Fable's project is the first time a virtual being has won a primetime Emmy in this case for outstanding innovation in interactive media. We'll walk with these beings through the city, sit on a couch and talk with them at night. But these characters are driven by AI engines, shaped by our own data, by, every, by our own every move, gaze and expression. In the future, personal data and code will drive story. But avatars would not only be the face of virtual characters, they will be the extensions of ourselves. Facebook and others are already working on digitizing the very fabric of our, all, our own world and our human identity and experience. We are stepping into a new world that will change um, everything. The future of immersive stories belongs to the next generation. The technology, no matter how advanced, will eventually disappear. The next generations of, generation of creators will think spatially and are able to step into these worlds with no perceived notions of other mediums. Our students will come up with amazing stories, the ones that truly and can and only can be told in XR. And I would like to share a few of these stories. This year, our students worked um, with, on projects with data, AI, virtual reality, augmented reality, games, and much more. Baby Lab is a virtual reality simulation experience that introduces you to CRISPR technology and criticizes the application of it on the human in possible future. CRISPR technology is a simple yet powerful tool for editing genes, a complex research component that 
uh, a phenomenon that we're just starting to grapple um, our minds around. The experience demonstrates a society that is allowed to apply CRISPR technology to human embryos. Inside the lab, you are able to walk and create your future child with the most desired features. You are able to experience CRISPR technology and this understands the risk hidden within it. The project was designed by one of our MFA design and technology students at the Parsons School of Design. My next project is Volunteers Needed for Digital Scene Partner, an interactive drama that explores the potential of augmented reality in theater, created by one of our BFA drama students in the performing arts. This is a volumetric capture performative piece. In the immersive performance, audience members wear the magic leap, headset that explores, and, the, and through the headset, they explore scenes from a variety of different plays where they interact with the digital scene partner. And finally, my last project, Signature. Actions have consequences. Signature is an immersive virtual reality experience created by one of our MFA design and technology students that raises awareness in the impact of sharing personal data. Since people often prioritize convenience over identity, this project offers an opportunity to step into the virtual world and critically evaluate the choices you make. The experience intends to make users understand that their actions have consequences. I'm doing a disservice of all of these XR experiences I, as I'm showing them to you in a flat screen and they need to be experienced. These young creators are boldly exploring a new form of immersing narratives in XR and I invite you to the new school to visit our XR lab and experience them. They're happening now in the midst of a global pandemic and a world that is grappling with understanding the impact of a digital age. These projects and those of all of our, of all of our students are making this new medium. As the author William Burrow once said, the future is embedded in the present. I want to conclude with three quick provocations as we enter to what I believe is the age of experience. First, XR is not technology of itself. Toddlers are talking to Google Home and Amazon Echoes every day. This generation won't remember that they couldn't converse with a computer. The developments with AI are fascinating, but the idea of any X product plus AI, XR or others is where the intended consequences are. As we co-create to reach our potential, uh, we, also we also will continue to cohabit with AI in various shapes and forms. Next. This will change everything. The solitary experience of virtual reality will become highly social. And finally, how would this change us? As a futurist, I like to look into the future, think outside of the box, or simply not know where the box is. I think this is where we find ourselves today. Simply translating or matching the frameworks to a new world can be dangerous. We don't need to replicate the models that are falling, um, in, falling us in learning today. But we are headed to an amazing world. And my biggest question is whether we will experience a crisis of imagination. My biggest fear and my biggest challenge to you, to all of you, is that we think big and perhaps not even knowing where the target is. I think this is the most important moment we face with AXA today. Unleashing our own imagination as educators and drawing on a new canvas, human experience. These are some of the comments I wanted to share with you today. Um, and um, I was uh, really you know, eager to also spend some time 
um, with all of you uh, talking about um, some of the questions um, uh, that uh, come to mind as a provocation. Okay, so, um, Karen? Yes, thank you very much, Maya. Um, uh, really fascinating stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm sure the, uh, the rest of the, um, uh, the audience agrees. And uh, so we, we are going to open things up to, um, to the audience for questions, please. So if you could please uh, type them in the chat. Uh, and, and while we're waiting for um, more questions to come through, Maya, I, I was sort of struck in your work in thinking about the, um, the work with theater uh, and, and also with signature. And I wonder if you could sort of reflect a bit on this, um, the implications of uh, XR technology for our, our physical experience and the way that it intersects with the digital world. Um, uh, there are some some changes happening here that we're you know, we're still grappling with. Um, can could you uh, you know say a little bit about that? The way that story living and um, experiential uh, uh, art um, allows um, for um, uh, you know our, our bodies to be engaged. Yeah, sure, sure, um, and thank you, Karen, for this. Um, uh, for this question. So I guess it makes me think about what makes a great immersive story um, and what is the best way to tell the story. Um, and I think this is about uh, experiencing a heightened presence, a sense that you really experience, you know, what's around you, um, that you are in a space, in a world, and the people in it react to you consistently and convincingly. I think it also means that there is an emotional charge. So VR is a great way to convey an emotional moment, a visceral feeling of sensation in our experience as, as humans. Uh, something that we would like to remember, something that we would like to share. And then the idea that these stories are spatial stories. So exploring the environment helps us understand the story. From what, you, from what we see in them, the way we interact with the sound, uh, with the beings there, helps us make sense of it, right? Um, and that we are no longer just a spectator, that we actually are not disembodied, disembodied bystander just sitting on the third row in a movie theater, that we actually have a sense of agency and involvement, uh, which gives us you know, a reason uh, to walk or move around or explore this world we've created and stepped into. And there's oftentimes a taste of impossible um, because oftentimes great VR experiences um, takes you to places you, you couldn't, you may not be able to experience. Like in, in the world of a, a cell or in, in places like um, the collider, the places where uh, you maybe not be able to meet people, but yet you experience this world in, in such an impossible way. And it, these stories invite for like meaningful inter interactions. Um, they're social. Um, they really invite us to be interactive. Um, and that requires really to think through um, the design and how to refine them and how to offer these interactions um, uh, to people who step into them. Um, and mostly, I think it's um, the idea that at this point, we see a lot of experiences that focus on the visual, but we need to go beyond the visual. Um, just as with, you know, mm. traditional media, um, in spatial experience, it's even more important um, that we look into immersive sounds, presence, that is convincing um, and makes us really feel what's happening. Right, absolutely. Thank you. Yes, there, there are a lot of great questions here coming through. Uh, I hope we'll have time to um, to get to them all. But but one that is sort of followed on to uh, 
what you were just saying is um, that uh, is it, about the role you think uh, XR and AI will play in the future of meetings and interaction, especially conferences. Do you think we will see lasting change on the two-year, five-year, longer time scale? Yes, absolutely. Um, while we find ourselves uh, in this particular moment in time, sweaty and prepared, um, I do believe in about a year or two, we'll be very much prepared to fully engage in, um, in immersive social events. And I think where we are today is the hesitancy is access. Access to hardware and oftentimes access to bandwidth um, in our homes, in our spaces. And I think this is upcoming. Of course, important advocacy work needs to happen in both. But I do believe that these worlds will continue to evolve and offer opportunities for highly social experiences. The future, um, whether it's immersive in work or learning, education, it's in, in the context of these social experiences. So I think we need to continue to really uh, open spaces to experiment, just as we experiment today here, to also look at what artists and creators are making, because sometimes they open these portals um, of ways of looking into virtual worlds the way uh, perhaps conventionally we, we don't see. And so I definitely want to you know, really encourage um, that opportunity to think creatively, to allow ourselves and our imagination to invite others for different parts of fields on our campuses, um, in, in our work, to join us and think and reimagine what these spaces could be. We're very early um, in, in, in offering these experiences, but I do believe we have an opportunity um, to, to make these opportunities that are fully global uh, for our networks um, and, um, and um, and indeed, some of our families who, you know, also um, oftentimes today don't don't reside even on the same continent. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, there's another uh, question about the um, the sorts of um, of tools, AI tools that your students um, are finding most useful and user friendly in their projects. Um, so we so the the. The AI tools, we we don't have a particular AI engine that we use in these projects, so I don't have a direct recommendation. In some ways, the project actually mirrored that as a performative space, um, and in other ones, use machine learning. Um, so um, there are different ways right now that um, companies are thinking through it, uh, and oftentimes at this point, is very custom to the, to the project. Yeah, okay. And um, so there are also um, questions about the, um, uh, you know, privacy and, um, and, and the use of, of uh, AI and XR mm -hmm. and, and the risks that are involved in that, in, in including in, in projects such as the ones um, you described. Yes. Um, you know, you know, just data privacy and ethics, it's its really, really important issues. It's really important for us to, as we um, as we step into these worlds, to really ask those questions, to have our students ask those questions. Um, I don't think we have yet a framework for this. You know, oftentimes people, uh, I think, you know, find themselves kind of assuming you know some of the some of the rules that we embody in the physical world just have to apply in the virtual worlds, and yet don't they don't? Um, we see once and once again that they don't. Um, so I think that um, we actually have to do a lot of work. Uh, just as we alluded yesterday, uh, as part of the State of AXA report, um, there's there's lots of different communities that are thinking and it's important that I think what's really important here is that both industry, academia, um, you know, people uh, from different parts of, of, um, of participating on this platform to be involved in, in framing this. Um, and in some ways, us as educators and, and our students, we really need to see ourselves as change makers and being an advocate for companies to um, be, to really both create and um, be 
abide to these new frameworks because I don't think we we have uh, you know we have a lot of we have a framework to point to we have a lot of small phones uh, on devices and experiences that are often confusing to regular consumers. This is important work that needs to take place. Great, fantastic. Um, I, th I think we have we have uh, unfortunately we have time only for one more question, um, but I will I will share with you the others um, in case you're able to respond to them in another another fashion. But um, uh, this one comes from uh, Jonathan Richter, and he's asked what you, what you see as um, the most promising social uses of XR um, uh, it, that are pointing to creative the creative futures that you see today. I think the most um, important social we have, we have features to, to leave this to the students. I think to be um, be able to um, really, um, you know, be reflective and bring our students as creators in these platforms. I think that ultimately they will create um, the, you know, the new language, this new medium. Um, is about that is about to take shape um, will uh, will contribute the most and I really I see it this every day um, I have um, undergraduate students graduate students as part of you know our university community coming from different programs I have to say how important it is to have the designers and makers and architects and social science researchers and you know social policy uh, also students, all of them to be engaged. And I, I just advise everybody who's taking on, thinking about that XR initiative on campus, I think should be, you know, bringing, you know, imagine yourself as the hub, the innovation hub for your community. But I think that ultimately um, we need to allow for, um, as, as these communities take shape, we need to allow them the space again to experiment, um, to really, uh, be there, you know, be present. I am oftentimes, um, you know, my and, and then my most deepest insight come um, actually from the K through 12 community. We, you know, we sit in an urban campus in the in the middle of New York City. So we have a lot of high school students um, uh, and high school teachers who are interested to come visit us um, in the lab. And uh, um, and when um, when we see those students who just basically don't need instructions, they uh, we you know they put on the headset and they immediately ask why don't we have more of this? Um, and I think that's um, why you know why is it my why do I still have um, textbooks the old way? Uh, why can I just create my project here with toothbrush uh, or Google Blocks? And I think th this is where these new um, new opportunity to engage uh, in in these virtual worlds uh, will um, will really um, come to life. I think we are uh, very early in in the space to just think that um, we know better. <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. Yes, thank you so much, Maya. I'm afraid that we we um, we don't have time for any more questions, even though there's some excellent ones uh, coming through in the chat, which I will share with you. And um, uh, but I, everyone, uh, please join me in in thanking Maya for this uh, this wonderful presentation. <laughs> F4 for the for the clapping. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Let's bring it on. Thank you so much, Maya. Great talk. Thank you. Of course, this is as usual is the beginning of a conversation. So it's amazing to be, you know, part of this community and I can't wait for what all of us will create and, and our students. And thank you. Iwan and Jonathan and Mark uh, for having us um, over your virtual campus um, this week. Thank you, Maya.